The Senate and House of Representatives have passed the Petroleum Industry Bill and approved 3% for the host communities. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the Nigerian government has threatened to deport foreign travelers who failed to present a polymerase chain reaction test result on arrival into the country. The chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, Bas Mustafa, made this known on Wednesday in a statement titled, Revised Provisional Quarantine Protocol for Travelers Arriving Nigeria. Mustafa, who is also the secretary to the government of the Federation, said passengers arriving into Nigeria must present only a valid PCR test to gain access into the country. He noted that passengers who fail to comply with the newly revised protocol will be denied entry into the country. At number 9, gunmen kidnapped six workers of West African Ceramic Company in Ajaokuta local government area of Kogi State on Wednesday. The incident was said to have happened in Emiwuru community in Ajaokuta local government area of the state where the company mined stones. Reports say the workers were kidnapped while loading stones expected to be delivered in the ceramic site located at Itobe in the same area council. The fully armed men took the six workers to an unknown location. The incident was confirmed to newsmen by the Kogi State Police Public Relations Officer William Ayer on Thursday. Ayer said officers deployed by the Commissioner of Police were operating in collaboration with other security agencies and currently combing bushes in the area to see that the victims are rescued. At number 8, the Defense Headquarters has disclosed that 73 Boko Haram members were killed in the Northeast within the last two weeks. The Acting Director of Defense Media Operations, Bernard Onyoko, who disclosed this on Thursday, said the operation was carried out by troops of Operation Hadin Kai. Oyoko said a large cache of arms and equipment were recovered from the insurgents in different encounters during the period under review. According to him, on June 27, the troops received a total of 55 escapees from the insurgents' camps, comprising 15 adult males, 12 adult females and 27 children who surrendered to them at Darajemel in Bornu. 44 AK-47 rifles, 2 PKT, 7 anti-aircraft guns, 7 gun trucks, ammunition, weapon cleaning materials, blankets, foodstuff, vehicles, generators, IED materials, religious scripts and other items were also recovered. At number 7, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it is worried about the coming November governorship election in Anambra State due to the continued decline of insecurity in the southeast. INEC expressed its concerns and determination to face the challenges on Wednesday in Abuja. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, in a lecture delivered on his behalf at the 21 annual Abubakar Momo Memorial Lecture organized by the Election Institute, said attacks on the Commission's facilities were alarming, especially on its headquarters in Anambra. At number 6, the Defense Headquarters has announced the arrest of a suspected member of the Islamic State's West Africa province who was reportedly sent on a mission to Lagos State. The announcement was made by the Acting Director of Defense Media Operations, Brigadier General Bernard Onyoko, while briefing journalists in Abuja on Thursday. Onyoko said the arrest of the ISWAP terrorist identified as Ibrahim Musa was made during standing patrols and raid operations at strategic areas in Sangota, Ogun State. Oyoko said intelligence reports revealed that Musa was on a mission to Lagos to acquire certain items for ISWAP's operations in Medugri, Bornu State. The defense spokesman also disclosed that the troops acting on intelligence arrested one Oyeshola Sahid for illegal oil bunkering activity at Ali Mosho NNPC pipeline. At number four, the federal government has said it has spent about 28 billion naira on its national social investment program aimed at reducing poverty in Niger. The focal person of SIP in Niger, Amina Gwa, disclosed this while addressing newsmen in Mina on Thursday. The program, which is an initiative by the federal government to reduce poverty and hunger across the country, consists of four components, conditional cash transfer, and power, homegrown school feeding, and government enterprise and empowerment program. Giving details on Thursday, Gua explained that the federal government had spent over 3.8 billion naira on conditional cash transfer to 81,176 households across the 25 local government areas of the state, and also injected over 12 billion naira for the feeding of 560,000 children for its homegrown school feeding program with engagement of 14,000 workers. At number four, the House of Representatives has rejected the lifting of the ban on Twitter in Nigeria. The House made the stance on Thursday while considering the report of its committee on the matter. 
recalled that the House had instructed its committees on information, ICT intelligence, justice and orientation to investigate the circumstances of the suspension of the microblogging site by the federal government. At number three, Yoruba rights activist Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Igboho, whose home was attacked by armed men in the early hours of Thursday, has suspended the planned Yoruba Nation rally, which was scheduled to hold in Lagos State on Saturday, June 3rd. Igboho announced the suspension of the rally during an interview with BBC News Pigeon on Thursday. In a statement earlier, the umbrella body of Yoruba self-determination groups, Ilano Omo Oudwa, had declared that the Yoruba Nation rally will hold on Saturday as scheduled. Igboho announced the cancellation of the rally shortly after. At number two, the federal government has said that the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nnamdi Kanu, will not be denied a fair trial and treatment. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, said this at a press conference in Abuja on Thursday. Lai Mohamed stated that Kanu was rearrested through efforts of Nigerian security and intelligence agencies, which collaborated with some unnamed countries. He said it is interesting that many are suddenly calling for a fair trial for Kanu as if he didn't get one before he decided to jump bail and flee. However, I can assure you that the fair deal that Kanu denied many of the victims of the violence which he willfully instigated through his broadcast and tweets will not be denied him. Finally, at number one, the Senate and House of Representatives have passed the Petroleum Industry Bill and approved 3% for the host communities. The upper and lower chambers of the National Assembly passed the PIB respectively on Thursday. The Senate passed the legislation after the consideration of the report of its Joint Committee on Petroleum Upstream, Downstream and Gas on PIB. While the House passed the bill into law after considering the report of the Ad Hoc Committee on PIB. However, the Senate approved 3% for the host communities as against the 5% advocated for by South-South lawmakers. Before the bill was passed, the Senate held a closed-door session with the Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Press Silva, and the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mele Kiari. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.